the Cincinnati Bengals and a 40% chance of rain and not much of a win today. Good afternoon again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton along with my partner Merlin Olson, and this really is a matter of survival for the Cincinnati Bengals today if they want to have any kind of playoff hopes. What makes the Bengals think they can start to turn things around against the tough Redskins team? I think a couple of things. They feel that they're the best team that Washington has faced this year. Second thing is that Cincinnati's offensive line is intact for the first time this season. And finally, Sam White still listed. He's giving Boomer Esaias in the green light. He said, go for it. Let's get the offense on track. Boomer is pleased. Also, he's pleased that Eddie Brown is back in the lineup after being injured at wide receiver. Now, if you're the Redskins and really playing outstanding ball both sides, what are your main concerns coming into this game? Well, Joe Gibbs said it very simply. He said, we're not going to change a heck of a lot. We've got it going. One major concern, the hurry-up offense was designed by Sam Weich to work against teams that like to substitute a great deal on defense. This Redskin team puts more subs on the field defensively than any team in the NFL. Joe Gibbs. And Sam Weich. Who do you think is the more animated? <laughs> Jim Breach will kick off the Redskins. Uh, Lee Johnson kicking off. The Redskins will receive. And it's picked up by Brian Mitchell. And a fine return by Mitchell out beyond the 30-yard line. Leo Barker making the tackle. Mark Griffin. In his last 21 starts, the Redskins have won 17 times and has a great offensive front. Jim Lachey, Raleigh McKenzie. Jeff Bostic, Mark Slareth, and Joe Jacoby, Ron Middleton. Done a terrific job in place of Don Warren. Ernest Biner, the running back, and there's the posse when they come in. Art Monk, Ricky Sanders, and Gary Clark. First down on the 31. The Redskins start with two tight ends. No surprise, Ernest Biner on the handoff will lose a yard. The Cincinnati Bengals defensively up front. Alonzo Mitz, Tim Crumry, and David Grant. The linebackers, James Francis, Kevin Walker, Carl Zander, and the number one draft pick, Alfred Williams. The cornerbacks are Lewis Phillips and Eric Thomas, and the safeties are Ricky Dixon and David Fulcher, who made the first play defensively. Second down and 11. Again, they go to Biner, and again, Biner loses yardage. And this time, David Grant takes the tackle, bringing up third and long. Very, very important for the Bengals to get off quickly today, and they have done it defensively with two fine plays, catching Finer for a loss on both of those plays. It'll be third and 13. Cincinnati Bengals defense right near the bottom of the NFL. Natu Tua Tagaloa and Skip McClendon have come in as extra pass rushers. And the posse on offense. Rippin will attempt his first pass. He's got a lot of time and he completes to Gary Clark. He might be short. He might be short indeed, Merlin. Let's see where they spot the ball. Ricky Dixon and James Francis combined to make the tackle. tip of the ball he <laughs> do you think he carries uh, some surveyors tools out there with him he got just enough by the tip of that ball to pick it up and a little sigh of relief on the far sideline not a good sign for Cincinnati defensively as Rippon could have eaten his lunch back there before he threw that pass and a first down for the Redskins on their 41 yard line Terry Orr and Ron Middleton two tight ends They rush four, and on the first pass to Clark, and it is caught for a very short game. The Bengals are signaling that the pass is incomplete. Jack Fetty is the replay official upstairs, and they rule that it is a completed pass for three yards. Second down and seven. Play fake. Biner. And that would have been a 
Sensational catch if Art Monk could have held on. Pressure on Mark Rippon that time from the rookie Alfred Williams from the University of Colorado that time. These are the kind of rushes you get excited about. Bottom of your screen, number 94. Watch this. They're bringing a man in motion who's late right there, unable to get there in time to get the bump. That was Terry Orr. And Rippa did a good job of getting that pass away. Almost got the completion. Third down and seven on the 44-yard line of the Redskins. Blitz. And a deep drop, and Art Monk is down there for the reception as the Redskins are now threatening. Art Monk had beaten his man, Joe King, a rookie defensive back from Oklahoma State, and a big gain of 30 yards for the Redskins. Well, the minute you start trying to figure out which of these guys you're going to double, you might make a mistake. They did here. There's a little bump, but it frees up Art Monk. Watch this perfectly thrown pass. Rippon not only read, read the blitz, but waited long enough to get it off. It'll be first and 10, and Art Monk has now caught a pass in 120 consecutive games and moves that much closer to Charlie Joyner for second place on the all-time list. Miner on a quick opener. Fires inside the 25-yard line in a gain of about three yards. Making the tackle was Lewis Phillips up from the secondary. Ernest Biner. Talked to him just before the game. He said, I kind of expected it to feel differently coming to Cincinnati in a Redskin uniform. Came here so many times in the great rivalry between the Browns and the Bengals. But he said, it doesn't feel any different. I expect a war. Well, it started out that way. Second down and seven. Biner coming in, the leading rusher in the conference. Ball is on the 23 of the Bengals. Rippon on a rollout being chased and the pass off the hands of Middleton incomplete. And that will bring up third down. And keep in mind that the Redskins have scored on 11 of their 12 possessions inside the opponent's 25 this season. They call it the red area. They have three men up front. On third down and seven. And Rippon up for grabs is deflected incomplete. Intended. It was Rod Jones who got a piece of it, and it was intended for any one of those wide receivers in the area. And that will bring up fourth down. Well, that certainly is not exactly the way Sam Weiss wanted it, but he's tickled that they're going to have to go for the field goal rather than have a shot at the touchdown here. However, when you've got the hottest kicker in the league playing for you, this is not necessarily the kind of thing you can hope to shut out. This will be a 40-yard attempt by Low Miller. is good you know anything I think inside 40 is a chip shot for chip these days and the Redskins score first and lead three nothing we pick up play after the restart Boomer Esiason the Bengals have the third fewest pass attempts in the AFC that's unusual for the Boomer and that may change today as he leads the Bengals up front Anthony Munoz Bruce Rivers Bruce Kozerski at center Paul Jaton and Joe Walter Rodney Holman, the tight end. They have an outstanding running back, as you know, in James Brooks, Eric Ball, the fullback, and Tim McGee and Lynn James, the wide receiver. First down on the 35-yard line. Three to nothing, the Redskins. 9-0-4 to go in the first quarter. James Brooks spins away from a defender, brings it out for a four-yard gain. The Washington Redskins defense up front, Charles Mann, Eric Williams, Tim Johnson, and Marcus Cook. The linebackers, Marshall, Millen, and Collins, who made the last tackle. Mayhew and Green, the corners. Brad Edwards and Danny Copeland at safety. Ordinarily, Second. Dick Boomer will, win it, will wind it down to about two seconds on the clock. He has never gone with less than ten seconds so far in this ballgame. Second down and six. Raven Caldwell has checked in defensively for the Redskins. Stepping up is Esiason, and he overthrows McGee. He had two receivers. McGee was the short man, and Eddie Brown was back deep, and Brad Edwards was the key cover man. And the Washington Redskins able to get their subs onto the field with that long pass. Substitutions on both sides. Esiason, who has been frustrated by the lack of passing, getting plenty of opportunities here early. 
And the Redskins have the man they want, the men actually, in Jumpy Gethers and Fred Stokes as pass rushers. Third down and six. Out of the shotgun. And the pass is caught, shy of the first down. Martin Mayhew defending on the receiver, Mike Barber. But they don't get enough. Barber very close to that first down, but Mayhew right there with him. And while Barber is in the air, he gets the shot right in the back. And look at this. He's trying to arch back and get the extra half a yard to pick it up. But no way. That's how short they are. And Boomer is out on the field. This, he's got the offensive unit out there. I think he's going to go for it. The first offensive series of the day. This is the regular defense in there for the Redskins right now. The regular starting defense. Man, Williams, Johnson, and Cook up front. Millen in the middle. They may just try and draw them off sides. Nope, they're going. And the handoff is Drake Taylor, and he goes outside and picks up good yardage. And a first down into Redskin territory. So on fourth and one, White scambles, and it pays off to the tune of 14 yards. Darrell Green making the tackle. Taylor gets most of his yards up inside, and yet here starts inside and quickly breaks it outside. Good blocking out there to turn him loose. That was Eric Ball, number 42. Raven Caldwell joins the other linebackers, and another fake by Esiason, and gets the pass off to Eric Cannis, the tight end. Defending was Wilbur Marshall, so we saw the Redskins use four linebackers on that play in a gain of only two. Eric Caddis likes to, the physical side of football. Ooh, we're back to live action here. And the pass downfield and is overthrown, intended for McGee. And Darrell Green was with McGee step for step. And now Weish is on the field, and he's upset. He better back off of that field or he's going to have himself a penalty on his hands here. Third down and eight coming up after the incompletion. We have seen both head coaches storm onto the field here in the first quarter with 156 remaining. Third down and eight. Eddie Brown goes in motion. They flood the left side of the field. The science and McGee catching the ball. Tim McGee took a great hit from Darrell Green and held on for a game of 27. And Sam is saying right back on him. Hit him before they're ready. Get down there and go quickly. Well, they said they were going to give Boomer the green light. He's got it today. It's down on the 18 of the Redskins. Three to nothing Washington. Penalty marker down. And the pass is caught by Barber. And he's got it inside the five-yard line, but there's a flag down back in the line of scrimmage. Darrell Green defending Barber on that play. One of the dangers of the hurry-up offense is that you don't get all of your people set. You're moving in there so quickly that someone is going to be moving into position and not set for the full second you need. There is no infraction on the play. That's twice in a row we've heard the referee say there's no penalty and no violation, no infraction. We saw several of the Redskins saying motion. It was motion, but the officials say no. They pick up the flag, and the completion will stand and move that ball right inside. Ooh, that's not good news. Marcus Cook heading for the locker room. And Fred Stokes comes into the game to replace a first and goal on the five after the 13-yard pass to Barber. James Brooks, the running back, on first and goal. He'll get the call up the middle, and Brooks gets in. Touchdown, Bengals. first touchdown rushing of the year and that's quite an accomplishment against the team that has two shutouts in its first three games it's now six to three and Jim Breach will try to add the seventh point with Lee Johnson holding 
And it's seven to three, Cincinnati. That touchdown not only builds confidence, but it also gets this crowd totally involved in the game. And here in the jungle, they are a factor. Watch the center, Bruce Kozerski here, drive his man out and offer room inside for the very explosive James Brooks. Driving over, Brooks cutting back against the grain, finding room and eluding a couple of tacklers to carry it into the end zone. And the Bengals take the lead, seven to three. We pick up play after the kickoff. The Redskins are first and 10 on their own 34 at the start of the second quarter. of a couple Carl Zander who was a holdout and activated last week against the Browns wasn't fooled that play broke down early the special plays that Joe Gibbs runs those end arounds the, the plays considered trick plays by many teams Gibbs builds in because he wants to make other plays stronger he wants to take advantage of that quick pursuit so very often you see a play like that it sets something else up Second down and 12, and a deep drop by Rippin, and his pass to Biner sheds one tackler and nearly gets the first down. And let's see where they st uh, spot it. I think he's still short. He picked up 11 yards and is still shy by a yard. Xander and Eric Thomas, the cornerback that time. Who would have thought that Cincinnati would have that many yards, but Washington, 97, it looks like a wide-open game to this point. It certainly does. But the Redskins are not only an experienced team, they're a patient team. They're still in their original game plan. They're not going to change this early in the ballgame. Why should they? I don't think they'll change at all. Well, late in the day, you may see some changes if this situation doesn't turn itself around. Third down and one at the 44. Play fake, and Rippin going for Biner. He's got it. And Ernest Biner beat the back Ricky Dixon, the free safety downfield, and a 26-yard gain will the Redskins into Cincinnati territory. Ricky Dixon is a safety now, but he was a cornerback. Good play action faking. A little extra time, and look at Biner stretch for this football. Showing the versatility. James Francis, number 50, moved from the inside to the outside to get back in the pass rush, coming hard, but not able to get past Bostic, the center, who gathers him up inside. Gerald Riggs is in at running back now, and Joe Gibbs intended to use Riggs as well as the rookie Ricky Urbans to spell Biner. Riggs carries. And Dixon makes the shoe top tackle inside the 25-yard line. Watch the right tackle as he pulls across here. Jacoby pulling across behind. A chance to get a feeling for this. He follows Mark Schlereth in the classic play that the Redskins run so often during the day. And they've been stopped on it a couple of times early. The old counter tray. Second down and four, and Riggs up the middle. How would you like to have a guy like Gerald Riggs as your backup running back? And he storms forward for the first down inside the 15-yard line. Gained that time of 11 yards. Well, this is the kind of pounding mixed with the passes that the Redskins have used so effective their first three games of the season. That time, Ron Middleton, who has done a terrific job in place of the injured Don Warren, another good block at the point of attack. First down, the Redskins at the Cincinnati 13. They'll go to Riggs again. Tackled from behind by Alfred Williams. Riggs really probably doesn't fit behind any other offense in the league. He's a power back that really doesn't do a lot besides power with that football. Criticized last week for hesitating in there. He's still a back that can go in and spell Ernest Biner. Give Biner those precious seconds to recuperate. You see it here. Although he did feel the lash last week watching him. There was some hesitation and on that last play, a bit of a hesitation. 
Second and seven, Jimmy Johnson joins Terry Orr and Ron Middleton. Three tight ends on the 10-yard line, and here is Riggs fighting his way inside to about the six-yard line, maybe the seven. Carl Zander in on the tackle. Joe Gibbs, always a great tactician. Will throw a new week, a new look at you every week, and never allows you to get comfortable. He'll pass on first and run on third. I mean, he does it every way. This is the tenth play of the drive. It's eaten up more than five minutes. Griffin rolling out, throws, and did he get over the goal line? No signal yet. The he pass was so. caught by Gary Clark, and he's down. The he ball, not. excuse me, Dick, the ball never crossed the end line. It would appear that his feet were in the end zone, but the ball never got across, never broke the plane of the goal line. Chance to watch it. This is the kind of thing Rippon is doing more and more now. A much better conditioned quarterback these days gets extra time on the roll and zips right through to the receiver. But you can see they have marked it down well inside the half yard line. First and goal on the one, Riggs and Biner now. Biner starts in motion. And let's see if there's a loose ball here. Quarterback Rippon by the misconnection with the center Jeff Bostic. Apparently it's still Washington ball and it will be second and goal. Three tight ends, two running backs, no wide receivers on second and goal at the one. Riggs, and Riggs will get in for the touchdown. Gerald Riggs with his third touchdown of the season rushing. He leads the Redskins in that department. Caps an impressive 80-yard drive, and Washington regains the lead with 9.08 remaining in the second quarter. Joe Jacoby, apparently, shaken up on that play. Watch Jacoby and Middleton pure power football. Great blocks. They'll just rip their people right off the line of scrimmage. Ernest Biner, the blocker for Riggs, as he drives in. Boy, that is power football at its best, but great concern here. Jacoby had moved to that right tackle position because of an injury, and now it looks like Ed, with Ed Simmons out, with Jacoby out, it'll be Russ Grimm who will have to come in and take his place. And Grimm is very comfortable at either the guard positions or the center position. Chip Miller is in now to try the conversion. Miller has been perfect on the season. He probably doesn't like these short ones. <laughs> you know what? He probably doesn't <laughs> mind them that much. <laughs> and it's now 10 to 7 in favor of the Redskins. So Gerald Riggs capped the drive. Nearly seven minutes for the Redskins on that possession. Now the Redskins lead it by three. We pick up play early in the Bengals' next drive. First down, Bengals on their own 43. Trailing now to the Redskins, 10 to 7. Look at how long they're down in their stances defensively. That's got to wear them out. Brooks bangs off one tackler. And finally, Brad Edwards storms up from the back position. And so now, Andre Collins joining it. one of the Bengals. In fact, it was Brooks and Collins and Wilbur Marshall also in on the play. But no time for that. They've got another play coming up in a hurry. Second down and seven. They were able to get their subs onto the field. They had to sprint, but they got them air. There's still confusion, though, for the Redskins. They're pointing around, looking around. Now it's... The Bengals turn to take a little time. They're used to this. This is kind of a game for them. But they're forcing the Redskins to play a game that they're not used to playing. Well, they don't mind taking the time because there can be no more substitutions coming in and the Redskins have to be ready for the play. Sison has some time. And his pass, not a good one, thrown to Eddie Brown, incomplete. Copeland was defending. The Bengals have countered with Lynn James and Mike Barber as extra wide receivers. It'll be third and seven. And the Redskins were not able to make any substitutions. We'll see. The ball is at the 45-yard line of Cincinnati. 
Three on the clock. Here comes Coleman on a blitz. He gets away, does Esiason, throws it up for grabs downfield, and a flag down. It'll be against the Redskins. Al Boyd made. And another penalty marker downfield. Weiss is on the field yelling at Monty Coleman and Mann. He is really angry at Mann as you watch that play. There's no question that Mays lost his man and hit the receiver well ahead of the pass. But the dangerous thing here, emotions escalating out of control on the field. Bad, bad vibes between these two teams right at the moment. Two flags were thrown. Here's the late shot on Esiason. Coleman is there. That part is legal, but Esiason gets the ball off right here, and it's Mann with the late hit, and that's what drew thats what drew Sam Weich's anger as he came out and yelled at Mann on the field. First and ten, Bengals on the Redskin 26. Brooks slices off right tackle. And picks up four yards. Wilbur Marshall in on the stop. Coleman and Govea immediately come in. They anticipated that. So the Bengals won't have any advantage with this one. Second down and seven. Almost looks like a, a standoff down there, doesn't it? What's it like to be a defensive lineman waiting for Oh, you play? hate that. You hate that. I'll tell you, being in your stance just drains you. And they'll keep those linemen in their stance maybe 20 seconds. You notice that they're really going to be tired before this day is out. Play fake, and he doesn't get away from Monty Coleman that time. And Esiason is decked back at the 30-yard line. A loss of eight yards. And that's the first quarterback sack of the game for either team. Eric Ball and Wilbur Marshall into it again. It's Coleman coming quickly. No one to block him. He's right there to take Boomer down at the top. Look at number 42, Ball and Marshall. They're really drawing at it. Third down and 15. The Redskins already had their nickel package in. Four wide receivers. And the Redskins showing blitz. Go to Brooks instead. And he gets to the 28-yard line. The crowd was looking for something a little more exciting. Jumpy Gethers making the tackle, and again, they have to separate some of the players. Well, so is Boomer. Boomer obviously angry, either with the inability of that play to make yardage, or he just wanted to throw it. And I think he's mad at the play selection. I think Boomer wanted to go for it. You come in with four wides. They did that on a, on a quarterback sneak. And didn't make it last week. That was a, a costly mistake. So Jim Breach is aboard to try to tie this game. It'll be a 46-yard field goal with Lee Johnson holding. Breach is two for two so far this season in the field goal department. And this kick is good. Just made it over the crossbar. And Breach is perfect, and we have a tie. 46 yards, and it's 10-10. Brian Mitchell is back deep for the Redskins. Ricky Urbans is alongside him and Lee Johnson getting ready to kick off. Well, the complexion of this game a lot different than many people thought. 10-10 the score, and the kick by Johnson booms out of the end zone. We've got the two strongest kickoff men in the league. Morton Anderson, the only one that can compete with them. Joe Jacoby is back in the game at right tackle. Russ Grimm is happy. First down on the 20-yard line for the Redskins and a play-action pass from Rippin. He's going deep for Art Monk. He's there. He's got it. And a big play into Cincinnati territory. Lewis Phillips on the stop and a gain of 44 yards. What a great job this Redskin line has done in protecting Rippin. Sacked only once all year long. The play action helps him here, and Monk, using his wily and craftiness, 
gets away downfield. Jacoby able to pick up the blitz on this last play. Watch Joe slams inside right here on his man. That's Mitts. He's got his mitts all over him, and Mitts will have no chance of getting in there. And that was a, not a 44, but a 54-yard pass play and the longest of the season for Mark Rippon. First down, Redskins on the Bengal 26. Biner wrapped up in a hurry. David Grant. And it'll be second down with four and a half minutes remaining in the first half. We're tied 10-10. Just a quick note on Art Monk. Big days here in this park. No stranger to him. I saw Lewis Breeden former cornerback of the Bengals in the elevator coming up to the press box and he was remembering a day in 1985 when Monk caught 13 passes for 219 yards he said one of the longest days of his life I can imagine second down and 10 this time going deep for Clark and we may have contact and we do Rod Olds and the Redskins will get the ball at the one-yard line. On a pass interference call, apparently against Rod Jones. Jones pinned Clark's arm against his body. Watch the end of this play. A perfectly thrown pass. Right there, he reaches out and nails the receiver before he can get his hands up for the football. Pass interference, number 25, defense. Automatic first down on the one-yard line. A 25-yard penalty, and the Redskins are at the one. And Mark Rippon showing you two perfectly thrown deep passes on this drive. Boy, those are two beautiful throws. Riggs, who scored earlier, gets the call, and Gerald Riggs gets in again for the touchdown. His second of the game and fourth of the year, and the Redskins quickly regain the lead. Last time they went in behind Jacoby and Slorette, now they go in behind McKinsey and Lachey. But again, with Ernest Biner blocking and Riggs able to get in there. Unselfishness, so critical in this league. Watch Ernest Biner lead the attack here. He won't get credit for this in a lot of areas, but watch this blocking by number 21, Ernest Finer. In motion, and right there, nails Joe King, keeps him out of the way. The kick by Low Miller is good, and with 3.48 remaining in the first half, it is now 17 to 10 in favor of the Redskins. Three passes and a run, and the Redskins hit the end zone. We pick up play following the kickoff. First and ten for the Bengals on their own 21-yard line. Esiason has plenty of time, and out of the backfield, he's got Eric Ball, the fullback. He's hit quickly and hard by Wilbur Marshall at a gain of five yards. They'd like to be able to take advantage of Millen's inability to cover those receivers. Millen basically a, a linebacker that can play the run, but boy, you'd love to get him matched up with a running back or any kind of receiver. Second down and five. Esiason this time going to an out penalty marker down. McGee on the catch. Mayhew covering, but there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. And that'll go against the Bengals. Will nullify an 11-yard gain. There's Millen, and we talked about wanting to get him in a matchup that would force him to cover the receivers. Watch him here as he drops into coverage, looking for his coverage area, and the quick throw right there in front of him. Well, someone else in there to cover and to put a hit on Eric Ball, but Millen kind of lost when he gets back there in space. Holding, number 78, offense. Repeat second down. Fingernail biting time for Sam Weish and Anthony Munoz. You don't see many holding penalties on Anthony Munoz. had his arm hit it was Wilbur Marshall who came storming in it'll go as an incompleted pass and will bring up third down with 236 showing on the clock the Redskins lead 17 to 10 
from the right side of your screen, and this is what Wilbur Marshall does best. When he's on the run, coming on the blitz, in motion, he'll dive right over and strip that ball right out of Boomer's hands. Boomer's lucky that wasn't a fumble. Got the hand going forward. Meanwhile, the Redskins bring in Al Boyd Mays and Sidney Johnson as extra defensive backs. And four wide receivers on third down and 15. Siason stepping up, fires, and the pass is dropped. Tim McGee had it in his hands and could have gained a bit. And that'll go fourth down. Just slightly behind a streaking Tim McGee. He's got to spin and do a 360 to try and take that ball. Boy, that is a tough way to have to catch the ball. But McGee has hands that usually bring that one down. In the one scoring drive for the Bengals, McGee caught passes from 39 and 27 yards when Brooks got the touchdown. Lee Johnson kicking, and Brian Mitchell goes back deep. This is the first punt of the game by the Bengals. And a beauty. Mitchell back to his 35. Brian Mitchell has the kicker to beat. He'll go all the way. No flags. Touchdown, Redskins. 66 yards, the second punt return for a touchdown by Brian Mitchell. Special teams comes through again for the Redskins. He has the lead mark of 69 already this season. Not since Mike Nelms back in 82 and 83 have these Redskins had the explosiveness of special teams plays like this. And Mitchell continues to frustrate opponents beautiful eyes as he picks the opening and then just blasts up field nobody is going to catch Mitchell and low Miller kicks the extra point and with two minutes and 13 seconds to go it is now 24 to 10 and the Bengals are losing touch after the restart the Bengals are third down and 15 on their own 15. The Siasen. Fires to McGee, wide open. He's got the first down. So Cincinnati will keep possession. A gain of 20 yards, Brad Edwards, and then Martin Mayhew helped him. It looked like Mayhew, anticipating the receiver would go out of bounds, broke to the sideline. McGee went back inside for the catch. There's an out pattern. And Andre, or that was Mayhew again, putting a big crunching stop on Mike Barber big receiver and a timeout immediately called by the Bengals. Here's the hit, by the way, if you're wondering why he went down. I'm sure he lost all of his oxygen with that shot, and I hope that's all it was, as he would appear to be up. There's the man who delivered the blow. Bobby Wilson, the number one pick out of Michigan State, has come in for Tim Johnson at right tackle for the Redskins, second and five on the 40-yard line. He's number 94, Esiason's pass, an under pattern to Brooks, and goes nowhere, and Andre Collins quickly makes the tackle, a gain of only two as we get close to the one-minute mark. Brooks limping off the field a little bit as he was brought down hard on that last play. Had ankle problems during the week in practice. Slipped on the practice turf here, and Harold Green has replaced Brooks. Third down and three. Esiason gets it to Green, and whoa, he gets the first whoa. down. Just charged forward like a bull. He knocked Mark Mayhew back a couple of yards. Well, you saw Mayhew get a shot a few minutes ago. Green just puts his head down. Looks like an enraged bull. Picks Mayhew up, and it takes two shots to finally get him to the ground. And a first down at midfield, and Esiason is sacked by Bobby Wilson and his first NFL sack. A veteran-dominated team, and the young rookie has not had a lot of opportunities to play. Takes advantage of it here. Well, the Redskins have hoped to be able to insert Bobby Wilson in that lineup as a starter. Their feeling now is he probably won't make it as a starter, but will be used to give the other veterans a chance to rest. Second down and 16. Wide open is Green, and he drops the ball. He had a lot of time to think there. Well, he was thinking about delivering another shot like he did last time. Unfortunately, you can't really do that effectively unless you hang on to the football. Boomer just shaking his head. Third and 16 now. Ball at 
the 49 yard line and if nothing else the Bengals would like to try to give Jim Breach a chance to get something back the score was tied 10 10 and there have been 14 unanswered points by the Redskins. Siasen wants one of the receivers to go deep. And they are covered, and the boomer is upset. And they're not going to get a chance for anything. And Monty Coleman put the seal on him, and that'll do it for the first half. And the Washington Redskins lead the Cincinnati Bengals 24 to 10 at halftime. Well, plenty of action in the first half, so stick around. There's plenty more to come. Going into week four, you know, there's surprisingly five teams that have undefeated records. Now, this week, we take a look at their strengths that have put them on the top and their weaknesses that could see them slip down the ladder. The Washington Redskins started their 91 season with a pair of shutouts. With the NFL's third-ranked offense, Mark Rippon is enjoying his best start yet. And the Redskins' defense is second only to the Philadelphia Eagles. If the Redskins get to 4-0, it would be their best start since they won Super Bowl XXII in 1988. The Buffalo Bills have the top offense in the NFL. Jim Kelly has thrown 10 TDs in the first three games, and Thurman Thomas leads the league in rushing. He and Scott Norwood continue to deliver for the Bills, saving Buffalo's 3-0 status last week versus the Jets. The only soft spot on the Bills lineup is their defense. They're ranked ninth in the league. The Houston Oilers defense has allowed the fewest points in the AFC, and the Oilers offense is the second toughest in the NFL. Quarterback Warren Moon's passing efficiency is ranked third in the AFC. If the Oilers can win the next two games, they'll tie their longest winning streak since 1980. The New Orleans Saints are off to their best start in their 25-year history. With Bobby Bear back at the helm, the Saints will not have to rely on their defense to pull them out of trouble spots. Going into week four, they're two victories ahead of the rest of their division, including the 49ers. The Bears' 3-0 record is nothing new for a team that's been around since 1920. And with a week four win, the Bears could give coach Mike Ditka his 100th NFL victory. Quarterback Jim Harbaugh's passing game has netted 560 yards and four TDs for the season. But the running game with Neil Anderson is still Chicago's strong suit. And speaking of Chicago, you be sure and stick around for the highlights. An amazing game against the New York Jets has been called the best ever Monday night matchup. Don't miss it. All right, now don't forget, if you have any questions, write to me, and I promise you we're going to answer all of this. Don's Mailbag, GPO Box 9994, Sydney 2001. Okay, let's get back to the game. It's the Washington Redskins 24, the Cincinnati Bengals 10. We're going to pick up play early in the third quarter. The Bengals have just finished the short but unsuccessful drive. The Redskins have the ball. Starting from the Bengals 42. Biner going outside. And ridden out of bounds Whoa. by Dixon and Fulcher. No flag is thrown, but one of the observers on the sidelines got thrown for a loop. <laughs> no, he takes an observer down with him, but blocks a hammer right off the sideline. Biner is so dangerous because he can get outside. Watch him hit right here as he... That looks like maybe one of the team doctors. And then, bam, right on the hammer and a suitcase and a duffel bag. I mean, if, if we were, if we had John Madden up here, he'd circle all those things. Circle all of them, and yeah. he would say boom on all of those <laughs> Boom, things. boom, boom. Second and four, three tight ends for the Redskins, including Middleton in motion. Power play, and Viner dives forward. Inside the 30, it'll be a Redskin first down. Making the tackle, Tim Crumrock for the Bengals. This is exactly what Joe Gibbs wants to do. Come out and control the football. And that's why you end up with about 34 minutes of ball control because this is the this is a team that given given the opportunity will run the football and run the football and run the football because they believe that that makes everything else work for them. Coming into the second half, Gerald Riggs, who scored a pair of touchdowns, actually had more yards gained than Biner. That's going to change. First and 10 on the 29-yard line of Cincinnati. Play fake. 
Didn't fool Williams, but the pass is caught by Ricky Sanders. And Sanders with another Redskin first down at the 12-yard line. Eric Thomas covering on the play. Good for 19 yards to Sanders, who was shut out last week against the Cardinals. Sanders very happy to have his problems of 1990 behind him. Said at times he felt like he was dragging a whole stadium behind him. But he made a big play on an end around last week for a touchdown and back here with a big play. Rippon was leveled on that last play and showing you his courage as he waited until the last second to release that football. One ride receiver for the Redskins on first down. It's Sanders. The ball is on the 11-yard line. Here's Biner. And Biner gets to about the nine-yard line where Dixon making the tackle. Keep in mind the Redskins can get a first down without scoring on this drive. Counter Trey again as the Redskins come back to the pounding of the run game. But again, Gibbs so adept at mixing it. He gets you thinking run and throws the football. The minute he can get you sucked up and playing that a couple of extra bodies to shut the run down, he throws it over your head. Kind of helpless feeling for the Bengals to be on the other end of that. Three tight ends, a running back and a receiver. And Rippon will look to throw. And he throws it away. A good move by Mark Rippon. And that's something he has learned. No one open. Maturity right there. You don't have the opening. You don't sit there and think about it. Unload that football. Put it out of bounds. You don't take the sack down there. There's good news and bad news for the Bengals here today. The good news is that they can move the ball offensively. The bad news, their defense, absolutely no match for this Redskin offense. Redskins counter with the posse. Sanders, Clark, and Monk on third down and eight on the nine-yard line. Rippon's pass, and it's incomplete intended for Clark and nearly intercepted with a whole host of black-shirted Bengals around including Rod Jones and Ricky Dixon, and that'll bring up fourth down and enter Chip Lowmiller. That ball looked like it kind of took off on Ripien, the quarterback. Looked like one of those fastballs. It just lifted up, the, lifted up on him. Some say there's no such thing as a rising fastball, but tell that to Sandy, people who watch Sandy Koufax. Uh, this will be a 26-yard field goal attempt. Lowmiller started the scoring today with a 40-yarder, and the kick is good. So the Redskins had their best starting field position, and Low Miller delivers, and it is now a 27 to 10 lead for Washington. The Redskins rub salt into the wound. We pick up play after the restart. First down on the 24, Craig Taylor, now the setback. The pass to Eddie Brown is incomplete. Mayhew was defending on the play. That's one of those plays that if it connects, Green or Brown could be gone. You know, on most teams around the league, Martin Mayhew would be the quarterback or the cornerback you don't throw at. But here on the Redskins, because of the in incredible talent of Green on the other side, he's the guy they go after. In a way, you got to love it. It gives you a chance at that football. But the spotlight is there almost every play when the passing game is live. And Joe Gibbs loves him because he works hard in practice and is smart. Second down and 10. Messiah's in trying to get something going. Eddie Brown is downfield and it's knocked away and a penalty marker down. Martin Mayhew defending Eddie Brown and that will go as a pass interference call against the Redskins. Well, what do you mean uh, spotlight? This is what we mean, spotlight. They come right back. And Mayhew misses the bump right there. That's all the room that Eddie Brown needs. He just come back off a partial shoulder separation, but Defense. doing a fine job on that play. First down. Mayhew, by the way, played the opposite cornerback position at Florida State with Neon Deion Sanders. They say he's quiet. Maybe that's why. He never got to talk when he was down there. You don't get much of a chance with Deion around. So a first down, a 36-yard penalty. Marked off against the Redskins. First down for Cincinnati on the Washington 40. Here's Taylor trying to go outside. 
and dives to the 35 yard line was chased by Collins from behind but it was Darrell Green who came up to make the stop gain of five yards Riverfront Stadium on a pleasant afternoon for football Merlin said the best they've had for football all year Dick Stockton and Merlin Olsen the Redskins leading 27 to 10 have scored 17 unanswered points we have 844 remaining in the third quarter second down and five coming up for the Bengals Green and Taylor are the setbacks you notice the Redskins not getting down in their stance nearly as early now I gotta figure those arms are getting a little tired Green gets the call good acceleration and Green gets first down to the Washington 25. Brad Words picked up nine. You mentioned James Brooks. He sprained an ankle and is not expected to return. So that makes Green's presence that much more important. And by the way, for the Redskins, Marcus Cook had a sprained knee. And we haven't seen him back in the game. That last run by Green will tell you why they're pleased with this young man. And very often you get a chance when someone else gets hurt. Green getting his opportunity here. First and ten, the Redskin 26. They'll go again to Green. Gets a couple up the middle. Matt Millen there for the play. Govea and Coleman come in for Millen and Andre Collins. We have a second down and eight. Second and six. Correction. Ball is on the 23. Esiason. Going deep, and the pass is deflected, intended for Holman, and Monty Coleman was there. And as Larry Pecatello, the Redskin linebacker coach, said, if they had a Hall of Fame for nickel players, Monty Coleman would be in. Well, he's probably the greatest 11th draft choice ever. They got him out of Central Arkansas back in 79, and even at the age of 33, he's all over it. And Boomer appears to have missed McGee, who was open on Mayhew on that last play. Third down and six with 7.05 remaining in the third quarter. Al Boyd Mays is the extra cornerback for Washington, number 20. Esaias in the crowd, fires, the pass is caught. He's in, I believe. No, they call it the one-yard line, Rodney Holman. Had Monty Coleman on his back, and he is knee touched at the one. I think they'll review that one, and they may turn it around. I really thought he scored on that play. Holman, who's had a couple of tragic plays, has fumbled down near the end zone, stopped drives, in fact, fumbled one going into the end zone against Houston. But watch this play. Rodney Holman goes up and lassos that ball. Watch the strength here. Well, he is short. <laughs> Referee has got his hand right down there saying, Merlin, you're wrong. Well, I'll admit it on that one. Well, it's not the first time, Merlin. Not, nor the last time, Booker, Nick, for any of us. Taylor dives over, touchdown. Frank Taylor, first touchdown of the season. They're able to get out of horrible field position and put a good drive together. They're not out of this ball game yet. Not with that explosive offense, they're not. And uh, you're so right. The crowd was like kind of dead as the second half started and they're back in. Now if they could just wake their defense up. Right. Jim Breach with Johnson holding. And it's now 27 to 17 with six minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Redskins defense underneath and Craig Taylor over the top and the Bengals cut the lead back to 10 points the Bengals defense forced Washington to punt we pick up play at the start of the Bengals next drive first and 10 on the Redskin 46 James Brooks sprained an ankle out for the game and Harold Green is the running back they start with Green on the handoff Pushes forward for a couple. Coaches talk about key plays. Four, five, six plays in a game that sometimes turn a game around. Well, Richie Pettibo will never lose the defensive game plan today. That I know. <laughs> Craig Taylor is the back. Second down and seven. Has to pick it up to look at it, though. <laughs> That's true. Esiason pumps. And the pass deflected off of Eddie Brown's hands. 
That could have been real dangerous with three Redskins, including Monty Coleman, right around the ball. There you see the game plan on a short rope where he can get his hands on it. I'll tell you this. The Redskins, I think, so far in this game, a good job of adjusting to an uncomfortable situation. We'll see if they can keep it up through this entire second half. The heat is on right here. Short rope. He's got the players on the short rope, too. Third down and seven on the 43 of the Redskins. Esiason needs seven yards. He's going to get him. Green on the stop. First down. You've got to like Boomer Esiason. He's the kind of quarterback I would have loved playing with. You talk about a scrapper, he'll do whatever he can. He said, hey, I'm not a Joe Montana type. I can't throw all those perfect passes. But he said, you give me my shots, and I'll come up with some big plays. Well, he's done that today. He used to be a bouncer in a restaurant owned by Joe Theismann in Washington. We got two of the biggest quarterbacks in the game. He's Sias in 6'5 and 220, and Rippon 6'4, 230. These are a couple of big horses at quarterback. You could have been a bouncer at <laughs> Joe Theismann's restaurant. Hey, I wanted to be a quarterback. <laughs> First down on the 34 of the Redskins. Esiason lets go, and Holman can't hold on. He got bumped by Mayhew after the play. And speaking about bumped, Esiason wound up on his back. That's a drop. You get the ball thrown that comfortably into your hands. Watch Boomer. He's going to take the shot here. Redskin crunch right there. Stokes there, man there. Watch Boomer. Boomer is not looking or worrying about the hit. He saw the drop. That's why he's upset. Boomer is one for his last eight. Second down and ten with a minute 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Redskins lead by 10, 27 to 17. And the handoff is to Taylor. He breaks it. He'll score. Taylor, his second touchdown of the game, and Jim Breach will try to bring the Bengals to within three. And the longest run of Craig Taylor's career. He's in his fourth year, 34 yards, touchdown. They caught the Redskins in a blitz. Man-to-man -man coverage. Nobody would catch Craig Taylor. That's Taylor's second touchdown of the day, and it's Redskins 27, Bengals 24. On the following kickoff, the Bengals' Rod Jones, number 25, broke his arm with this hit on the return. We pick up play with the Bengals in possession early in the fourth quarter. First down at the 46 of the Redskins. Skins lead by three. Craig Taylor, the running back. Pass to McGee. He may have a first down. Martin Mayhew defending. And they do. Four catches for 96 yards for McGee. And this game has turned into a Donnybrook. Matching an undefeated against a winless opponent. The ball is at the Washington 35. They give it to Green. And Green picks up about four, making the tackle for Washington, Millen, and Collins. We talked about the fatigue. Richie Pettibone talked about it. There's no huddle offense. is forced players who were ordinarily on the bench a great deal during the game to play much more than they ordinarily would. 
and fatigue has to be playing a role as we get late into this ball game. A concern, I'm sure, on that Washington sideline. Second down and five. Early here in the fourth quarter. And they go to green again. And that'll bring up a third and three for the Bengals. Knocking him back was Eric Williams along with Wilbur Marshall. You know, if that's the case and there is fatigue on the part of the Redskins defense, who would have ever thought normally Washington's the team that wears down the opposition with their running game? They really do. There's an opportunity for them to shut things down here. This would be a very, very long field goal for Breach. Third down and three. Set green in motion. Esiason runs for the first down. And Fred Stokes shaken up at the 45 yard line, 35. Munoz with a big block for the boomer. Esiason's mobility pays big dividends. And he brings him right back to the line. There'll be no rest for that Redskin defense. Quick snap. They had too many people on the field. And the pass is overthrown and thrown away on purpose. Penalty marker was thrown in the end zone. Stokes did not get off the field. There were 12 defenders on the field. The offense substituted, and there was a quick snap. Therefore, we have no infraction on the play. The offense is warned. Sam was saying we didn't substitute. You can read his lips as well as I can. Offense is warned, and Sam Weiss is living. And I think he's right. I did not see any offensive substitutes go onto the field. The rule is very specific. As long as they don't substitute, you can get caught. And again, he's telling them we did not substitute. Sam has had a scowl on his face for more than a week. He has not only had a horrible week, but it's been a horrible season so far. Sam doesn't want to see his team lose an opportunity here because of an official call, and I don't blame him. I think he won his point. It is a first down, and now Joe Gibbs says why. Esiason's pass tipped and incomplete intended for McGee, and Darrell Green was the cover man. The ruling is made that there was no play. Therefore, the first down would be run over again, and Boomer unable to make that connection on what looked to be an opportunity for the touchdown. 11-20. We have a lot of time remaining in this one. Redskins by three. Second down and ten from the ball at the 12. Already... Easily in Jim Breach's field goal range. Bengals are looking for six. Boomer making his call, as you see, an audible all the way around. And the give is to Craig Taylor. Taylor gets to the 11-yard line. Brad Edwards to stop, just a gain of one. And that will bring up third down. Five new faces in this lineup defensively for the Redskins all inside over the last year or two Eric Williams Tim Johnson at tackle Matt Millen inside Copeland and Edwards big play by Edwards all right what does Esaias do here on third down and nine he's got to throw the football without question here and not a lot of room to do it down deep inside this is where that number one pass defense ought to begin to assert itself He doesn't want to call a timeout. The clock has six seconds. He better not go too long or he's going to get stopped here with a five-yard penalty. He got it off in time. And the screen pass to Taylor. Taylor dives to about the three. Darrell Green on the tackle. Make it the 13. So it'll be fourth down. Well short of the first down markers. 
it pleases Sam Weiss and now another injury McGee was shaken up but Breach will come in to try to tie the game Bengals with an opportunity after Mark Rippon's fumble to take the lead but they'll settle for a tie a 25 yard attempt coming up he's already kicked a 46 yarder Lee Johnson will hold and the game is tied Weish and Esiason aren't seeing eye to eye. We pick up play into the Redskins. Next drive. First down on the Bengal 37. And Rippon going up top for Sanders, and it's intercepted. Richard Fain. possession until he hits down on about the one yard line and that's where the drive will begin but oh what a big big play by Payne on the last two possessions a fumble recovery and an interception so the Bengals defense under Dick LeBeau underscored here in the final quarter first down on the two Fred Stokes is in as a pass rusher on first down for the Redskins Esiason looking for room, going deep for Eddie Brown, incomplete. And covered downfield by Edwards and Mayhew. Sam not afraid to throw it out of his end zone. And that big offensive line we mentioned, they're intact for the first time this year. They have made their presence felt. They certainly gave Boomer the time he needed there. And important for the Red Sox that Stokes not only in on first down as a pass rusher, but apparently healthy after leaving the field. Redskins. You've got baseball on here. I can't understand why. It was just a few hours ago you were doing a baseball game. Second down and ten on the two. Harold Green trying to run out of trouble. Matt Millen on the tackle. The Giants beat the Browns 13 to 10. Meeting Bill Belichick, their old defensive coordinator, and now are 2-2 two two on the season. There's a big surprise, a big surprise. Whoa. <laughs> New England leading Houston, and the Saints keep marching. Would that be the biggest upset of the year so far? That might be. Would say so. If it holds up. Third down and eight. <laughs> and the give is to Green. They're just looking for a little room on that play, and the defense shuts them down. Copeland and Eric Williams that time, and now Lee Johnson will come in to kick it away. The score was tied at 10-10 in the second quarter, and the Redskins scored 17 unanswered points, but since then, the Bengals have come back with 17 of their own, and 540 remain in the fourth quarter. Johnson will be kicking, and Brian Mitchell, who's already returned upon 66 yards for a touchdown. And let's see if they try to kick this one out of bounds. Ooh, bad snap. He's going right back to him. Short kick. Good decision, Brian Mitchell. Let it bounce. But the Redskins have what they want. Great field position following the 48-yard kick. 5.17 on the clock. Stephen Hobbs, Art Monk, Gary Clark, and Ricky Sanders. Four wideouts on first down on the Redskins 47. Ernest Biner. 
gets into Bengal territory. Picks up about five yards on that play. Fulcher and Lamar Rogers, a rookie defensive lineman from Auburn. You've got to spread for the four wide, and they take advantage of it. Time of possession has changed. You remember Washington dominating in the first half, now almost dead even, as the Bengals have been able to do their own dominating here offensively in the second half. Second down and five. Again, Biner, and he gets a big opener up the middle and gets the first down to the 35-yard line. Lamar Rogers making the tackle and a gain of 12 yards. So hard defensively to try and stay with a team that can do it all, where they can spread you out with the four wides, put a single back in there, and still have the ability to run up inside. Great cutback run on that play. Up front, Jacoby, Schlerett, Bostic, McKinsey, Lachey, doing a great job for the Skins, as they always seem to do. Fernandez Vincent, another rookie defensive back, is in there against the extra-wide receivers. And Biner, what a beautiful runner he is as he gets inside the 30-yard line as the Redskins inch closer for Chip Lowmiller, who was 9 of 10 this season. Rodgers and Vincent making the tackle. And the Redskins content in using a lot of that time. Both clubs have the full complement of timeouts remaining. Very fine trap block on that last play. Ron Middleton coming across and taking out Natu Tua Tagaloa. But the Skins being burned on that passing play have decided they're going to settle in for a little running here. Three tight ends on second and three. Gerald Riggs in the game, breaks one, and Riggs is knocked out of bounds inside the 10-yard line, and the clock is still running. He did not get out of bounds. We have three minutes to go, a gain of 19 by Riggs, who has scored two touchdowns today. Ricky Dixon on the tackle, and Low Miller, well, that would be a chip shot now for him. Watch the lead block on this last play. Skins going to crunch. That's Fulcher coming up. The strong safety. What a fine job by Ricks. One concern here. You don't want to leave too much time on the clock for the Bengal offense. I'd expect to see more running plays here. First and goal on the nine. Here's Riggs. Redskins don't mind that at all. Didn't get much thanks to Alfred Williams. And they're going to let this clock run down to the two-minute warning. Sam Weiss won't let them. He'll use a timeout now and force the Redskins to get off another play before we get to two minutes. And so the Redskins will have to run another one off, and the Bengals are now left with two timeouts. The Redskins with an opportunity, if they can put it in for seven, to drain most of the time off the clock and go ahead on the scoreboard. And if they can't get the seven, Low Miller gets his chance again. And Boomer wants his chance again, which he will get. Regardless. 27-27 to score. Second and goal on the seventh. It's Riggs to the five. Riggs scores his third touchdown of the game. Jacoby, who delivered a crunching block, and the Redskins now lead it. 34 to 27. 33 to 27. It'll be 34 after Low Miller gets a chance. What an afternoon for Gerald Riggs. 10 carries, 61 yards, and three touchdowns. But the attention now moves over to the Cincinnati side. Four to 27. Some big blocks on the right side of that offensive line. Jacoby, Schlereth. You got the blocking on the outside by number 87, Middleton. Number 79 comes across. Lachey. And there was all kinds of help. Much more than Riggs needed it. <laughs> well, we're allowed that kind of celebrations now. That was definitely spontaneous. 
The Bengals trail by just a touchdown. We pick up play after the kickoff. Under two minutes on the clock. The Bengals are first down on their own 20. Four wide receivers. Redskins have Mann and Gethers and the rookie Wilson up front. First down for the Boomer. And his pass is caught by Lynn James. It'll be a first down, a gain of 18, and that's a terrific first play for the Bengals. Gets him off on the right foot. Boomer said that Lynn James, if they had to choose an MVP for the first three games, Lynn James would be in. Well, he just made another nice mark. First down from the 39, and the Boomer is sacked. Trying to hold on to the ball, and Charles Main. That'll be the fourth quarterback sack of the game for the Redskins, and for Mann, his fourth of the season. And it comes at a most timely opportunity as they're able to shut him down, give him a second and 15. Boomer's right back on the ball. Second and long, and the pass is caught by Eddie Brown. Does a little dance and steps out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line and stops the clock with 1.15 remaining. Al Boyd Mays and Monty Coleman both in on the play. Boomer Esaias, one of those confident quarterbacks, very comfortable in this two-minute drill, has access to his whole, whole offense, and right now, with some fine outside receivers and great talent, we'll get right after it. Well, he's got two downs to get the eight, nine yards in the first down. Third and nine, and he's got two shots at it. As they will go for it on fourth. And steps up and the pass is incomplete. James, the intended receiver. I think the Redskins and the Bengals both saying this after a whole day of emotional and intense football, it may all hinge on this one play. This is it for Cincinnati. Esiason has time, and the pass is knocked away, and it's ruled incomplete, and the Redskins take over on downs. And it was Mike Barber who was hit by Andre Collins, who would not let Barber hold on to the ball, and the Redskins take over with a lead of 34-27, to 27, and with only one timeout left by Cincinnati. A great game coming down to the end, and the Redskins apparently will prevail. Andre Collins simply forces this ball loose with a gigantic hit comes back in right there and Barber who looked to have the first down simply could not hang on to that football a huge play by the second year lineman so the Cincinnati Bengals blow their best chance for a win so far this year and the Redskins wind down the clock the final score Washington 34 Cincinnati 27